Hey y'all, it's Saturday. Yeah, that means it's time for Keeping Current with Angelina Carolina Pirelli. That's me. Um, sporting new things today. Gotta get used to them. They're, they're driving me a little nuts out right now. But uh, that's all right. Um, I'll get used to them or I will not. Either way, they will grow out. Anyway, let's get into this um, current um, day. The sun is out. Wonder upon wonder. I'm so excited about that. Um, everyone needs to be out in this beautiful sunshine today. If you have snow where you are, so sorry for you because I don't and I am so happy about that, but I really feel bad for you guys who do. Um, it's just time for, it's time for spring. It's time for winter to go on its merry way and go back to um, hell where it belongs. Okay, so anyways, um, let's, my dog. This is my dog. She wants to get in in a video so bad. So this is Tiny Elvis. Hi. Hi. She's a Shih Tzu. She's such a baby. She's a princess. Say hello. Say hello. Can you say hello? Say hello to your people. Hello. <laughs> Shh. Okay, there's your, your five seconds of fame. Now go away. Anyway, so, um, I would not be doing my due diligence on my YouTube channel if I did not talk about the coronavirus. But I'm not going to like inundate you with it because you've already had all that on every news channel and ad nausea. Okay, so um, all you're going to get from me is it's it's bad over there in China. It's so bad that Avril Lavigne has, po has postponed her tour over there because she's worried about um, contracting the coronavirus. So it's that bad. I mean, Avril, I love her, but, um, she, you know, she's, she's not going to take the chance and I don't blame her. I, I don't think anybody should be over there right now, personally. Uh, I mean, if you don't got to go, don't go. Good job for you, Avril. That was smart on your part. Um, anyway, so, um, let's talk about the people this, uh, past week, uh, week and a half that have had really kind of not a good time so much, um, uh, let's start out with my Uncle Joe. And of course, I'm not really talking about a like blood relative of mine, but I am, I do consider him a, a, a really cool guy. He was probably really cool to potty with back in the day. But I, that day has come and gone. And God bless him. Um, my uncle, my Uncle Joe Biden. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, here he is. His Uncle Joe. If it hadn't been for God and I, Joe, I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? If it hadn't been for God and I, Joe, I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? So as you may or may not know, Uncle Joe is um, one of the um, candidates who's trying to be the Democratic nominee for the president. Um, in the presidential election this year. You know, it's election year, it's a crazy year, and Uncle Joe's a little crazy, so he's jumped in there and he's trying his best. But this, eight days ago, uh, so he made a really bad boo-boo mess up when he was up there on the stage during one of his, one of those debates um, with the other Democratic um, candidates. And he says, um, or not, you know, he says um, that over 150 million people in the United States have died from gun violence since 2007. <laughs> yes, well, if that was true, that's over half our population, Uncle Joe. So. The upside of that is there's a whole lot less people that have to worry about contracting the coronavirus. <laughs> but the downside of that is that's a, a whole lot more and you padded your numbers there or you just got your stats wrong. Either way, it sounded crazy. It was a boo-boo. It was a mistake. It sounded not so. Uncle Joe, listen, pull it together. Realize that your day has come, your day has gone, and now you can, need to go on to Golden Pond or whatever and go sit on your rocking chair and enjoy your grandchildren and your greats and what, however many you have and enjoy what's left of your life. I mean, you got plenty of money, you got plenty of clout, 
your Joe Biden, your Uncle Joe. Um, you, some people think you're a little creepy. I just think you're an old man that, that wants to have fun. Um, and, and that's fine. Um, but I think, I think that your day has come and gone and I think it's time for you to go enjoy what's left of, of your days. And, um, don't worry about that White House so much. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's beneath you at this point. Go enjoy your life. Um, let somebody else be up there crazy and with the nuclear codes. We don't need you having them. So what if something happens really and you, you call out the wrong code and then they, they, they press the wrong thing and we're all blown up and we blow up one of our allies. I don't know. It's, anything could happen. But if you're going to mess up numbers now, what are you going to do when you're actually in the driver's seat? It's, it's scary. So please just, Uncle Joe, go enjoy your life. Okay? I love you, but go enjoy your life. So he's the first one that I want to talk about. But um, that's that. Um, poor Joe. But probably he hasn't had as bad a time lately as another man that a lot of people have been talking about lately. Um, and I'll show you his picture here. He's not famous so much as he's infamous at this point. And um, I'm talking, of course, about this guy here. Yeah, so if you don't know who that is, that's Harvey Weinstein. And um, he got convicted this week um, of his, um, of several charges, um, amongst those being criminal sexual assault uh in the first degree and uh, rape in the third degree. Uh, his most serious charges were dismissed, however, by the jury. But um, he's had that coming for, for some time, I do believe. I think his luck ran out. Uh -huh. The Me Too movement has um, uh, come into his world and um, his days of pawing and hee-hawing at his um, sexual escapades are over. Um, and here's the thing about Harvey is that for the longest time, he uh, was so pompous about everything. And now he, they, the people closest to him are saying that he's down in the dumps and he, and he doesn't know why they convicted him. The jury convicted him on, on these um, charges. And I, I just want to say, really? Really, Harvey? Maybe it's because you're putts and a perv. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't on the jury. I didn't hear all the facts and maybe I'm making a lot of presumptions here, but you might be just a bit of a touchy feely perverted putz. And that's why they convicted you. I believe in our justice system. So I believe there was some justice in that. So bye bye Oh, and he is, um, I also heard that, um, through the grapevine and TMZ and all that, that he has hired um, someone to get him ready for, for prison. Like on that movie with uh, with uh, Kevin Hart and um, Will Ferrell, um, which I think is a hilarious movie. If you haven't seen it, you, you need to check it out. I can't, the name of it right now is, um, is escaping me. I'll think of it momentarily. Um, but um, that's what Harvey's done because he wants to make sure he has the best chance of making it there in prison. But, you know, you know what they say about sex offenders in prison. They don't have the best time. So, um, Harvey, you know, you reap what you sow, buddy. And uh, so those are the people that have had some, some tough times lately. Some, some guys that you've heard of. Um, my Uncle Joe and then... Um, creepy peedy hobby. Um, so if you didn't know about those things, um, now you know about those things and, um, you can do whatever with that information, but at least you're keeping current with them. You guys be careful out there. Wash your hands. Um, don't get around anybody that looks like they may be sick. Um, tell your, your cousin Jeanette that wants to come over and leave her snot-nosed kids with you that you're busy yeah she needs to find somebody else that um is uh willing to wear a mask 24 7 because you don't have time to get sick because nobody has time for that so 
Um, you guys stay careful, stay, stay um, sanitized, and I will see you tomorrow for Seriously Sunday. Bye.